West Menor Park uh, Commission order. Uh, and first thing we do is knowledge we do have a quorum. The next thing on the agenda is approval of the minutes uh, from the Park and Recreation Commission meeting on May 22nd, 2019. It'll be the green uh, sheets in your packet for anybody that cares to refer to those. Uh, motion approved. Second. Further discussion? If not, all in favor of said motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by the same sign. Motion is carried. Moving onwards, unfinished business. Uh, item A, update of the Library Recreation Center. Mr. Hepner. All right. You have in front of you the latest and greatest updated plans. Um, and just kind of a real quick recap. This bugs are flying around my face. The, uh, we, what we did on the plan, you'll notice there's the dance studio, the multi-purpose room, the bathrooms, the lobby like we've been planning on. But we thought it probably makes sense to have a wall, somewhere a corridor, so people can't just willy-nilly throughout the entire basement before we do phase two. So that's what you see on this plan. Uh, Zimmerman currently is kind of finalizing the design plans and the scope documents for the mechanical electrical plumbing. And uh, Mark told me he probably he's aiming for about August 1st to get that back to us for a review. However, there are a number of questions that he posed to us a little while ago, maybe a week ago or so, that we as a city have to answer. So I don't have those with me, but there's a long email that most people, Nick's involved, Cindy's involved. Uh, I sent it to Jay today and library is involved as well. So kind of things like <coughs> finishes, ceilings, all that good stuff. So uh, what else? Yeah, see the idea is they'll come back with the plans and scope, review it, make any tweaks, and then as we do an open house with contractors to come through to look at the plans and the actual facility and go through the bidding process and uh, keep on going from there. Craig, orient me just a little bit here. This is all of the uh, bottom floor of the basement. Um, where is the main lobby on the first floor in relation yep. to this? So basically above the lobby on this plan. So on the very upper left side, you'll see the elevator and stairs. Yes. So that says you come in the main front door the library. Yeah. So you'd come down those stairs or elevator to get into our space. Okay. So, so the lobby is uh, mostly directly above so this So the lobby. existing lobby. Okay. So that's so the north side. is actually to the right of the paper. Going this way? To the right of the paper. South? That way. That, that way? would be north. Then, okay. Then this is south. South. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, and as I've talked about timing before, we're hoping to do some of this oh, work in the fall or okay. probably end up being winter. Optimally, it'd be nice to get into the building January 1st-ish, but that might back up a little bit. And Jay, I don't know if you have any updates on Mutual Mall or if there's any word. Nothing since your last meeting minutes reflected that the extension was granted through August. I've had a conversation with the realtor as of about a week or so ago that's got the property under contract, and he had no new information to share on <coughs> the, will, uh, the ability to close. Are we so. running any programs in there currently? Anything after the end of August? Program for it? Mm -hmm. September, October, November. So we can still utilize it throughout that time. The plan is to keep using it through the fall, and we'll see where it goes from there. Okay. And this okay. offer, they can walk clear at the end of August, right? There's no nothing holding it. Right. They might, they might ask the council for another extension. Right. Uh, if they don't have any further development leads or plans, the likelihood of getting that extension, I guess I, I wouldn't be prepared to speak to that now. Yeah. But. I'm sure what they're looking for is a, a tenant or somebody to, that was, I'm sure that's the reason. Yep. So unless they nail somebody down, they're not going to buy the property. They had some leads and those have not produced the fruit that they were hoping they would produce as of yet. Okay, good. So okay, go what will probably happen is the committee, there's a committee that you know of that has some of our staff and also some Mike Starr and Mike Chevalier are part of from Parks Rec Forestry. There's also staff and library board members, so I think they're going to have to meet to talk through some of these questions on finishes and what they want to see actually go into the plan. So I'll try and uh, get that moving, but I have one more day left. So. Okay, okay. Uh, another question for you. Are we going to be charged rent for our usage of that? 
to be determined. Yeah, it's all part of the questioning process. Yeah, Mike was part of the, uh, we had a committee meeting back a couple weeks ago, so yep. discussion on how, who's going to pay for construction, who's going to pay for utilities, rent, if that's still being worked out. That will all have to be finalized before it moves forward. Who's going to clean the place, who pay, you know, all, so. <clears throat> Getting in when the library is closed. Correct, and correct. That too. Mm -hmm. It's real, I mean, the entrance, I don't think there's an issue with the entrance there when the library is closed and all that. I don't think that's. Oh, you can get it outside. Yeah. Yeah, it would just be, well, it would just be the front doors, or be, but they can lock off the rest of it, so I don't think that's going to be an issue. It's a nice entrance, actually. It's handicap accessible, and uh, so. And I'll just add, Mike and I were went down there uh, a few days ago to do some clean out the basement and stuff. And Amy and Brad were really cooperative and easy to work with and supportive. They support the project. They understand the value of recreation and the need for it. So mm -hmm. they've been outstanding. Very good. You know, we're, <clears throat> I can say we're returning, but no. Many, many years ago, I think back in 1984, 85, we used to meet in the basement for planning commission. We did that for two or three years. We met there, and thank God they got they what they. Yeah. I know when we were down there. I'll tell you. In fact, that that's the place where we did the whole rezoning of the city and everything else. We did that for two years down there every other week. So our I staff is. Memories. Our staff is prepared to actually do a clean out day. So the. Library's working with an electronic disposal place for some things, and also talking to Habitat for Humanity. And then our gang uh, was looking at going in there early August to clean out some stuff. Very cool. Okay. Any other questions or concerns on the part of the commission? If not, we'll move on to item B. Update, River West, River Walk West concept plans. Okay. Oh, Miss Cindy. I have some show and tell. Do you want me to hold yeah. something for you? Who's going to hold the signs? Oh, I can hold. <laughs> Paul Deschamps is here. Come on, Need Paul. Manna. There. Oh, I can hold. He's here. He can like participate. Okay, Paul, you can hold this one. Okay, now you need to get on. It's not great for TV. Well, okay. You have so, to be matched together here. I think you need to be together. Which, which way are so, we? So, Paul, you need to come on you this end. Mike, you need to go on the other end. No, Paul, you can go back. My Paul's on the same on the other one. Okay. This one's so much better. Dyslexia. Right. <laughs> right and left dyslexia, yeah. All right, first I'll start with this. This okay. is the south end of the proposed river walk, and we have a fly-through that, that SEH prepared that when our next meeting comes around, we can show that if you need a computer and stuff. So this is the existing south plaza that we have on the south end. So across from there, we're proposing to do a, like a whole length of this is going to be river wall again instead of that bank that's there now. And then we've got seat walls like we have farther north up here, again repeated down here. <coughs> this path is 12 foot wide, the whole length and wider in some areas, so we should be able to get um, emergency vehicles down there if we need to. Um, and one of the things we're planning on doing is where the cantilever is by the theater, we want to put a wall there so it's not a cantilever anymore so you could drive all the way through. We are limiting pedestrians in, or, or vehicles in here. We're talk, Jay and I have been talking to all the business owners trying to find out like what do you do with these little spaces between our property and their property. There's a couple feet yeah. between the buildings and they've got paving in some areas and we're putting concrete, those kind of things. Plus we've got <coughs> utilities to finish working out. There's brown fields in this area so in the plan is to try to get the plan done this year and permits at least started to apply for, apply for grant funding next year and hopefully start construction either towards the end of next year or 2021 or 2022 depending upon how long it takes us to get the money together. So this is the uh, south end, you can see the south pedestrian bridge. Um, the river wall extends a lot of this way. Some of the areas, what we're trying to do also is capture all the stormwater that comes off the, the paving and treat it before it goes into the river. Right now, everything just runs right into the river. The city has MS4 require, new requirements to meet for um, cleaning out or improving water quality. So we're trying to help with that effort with this project because it's right next to the river. It's a good place to do that. So I'll go through this plan thing. So this is the South Plaza on the east side. This is those steps that are shown on here. Um, river wall, river wall, and planting areas. So we have some green in there and shade. 
Uh, the pathway, there's not a lot of space to do much except the pathway and the wall in some areas. Um, so we've got another, um, another set of steps right here. Just to give you a context, Vest Pocket Park, this is Felons, that gray garage, this is Hussars, and this is the theater. So we are working with the theater also to make sure that their plans jive with our plans. Um, the, the, we want to open up this alley to the main street down to the river by taking out that high deck and putting a set of landings and steps in there so that you can go back and forth between Main Street and the Riverwalk here. Where is that alley? Show me again. Right here, okay. right next to between Theater okay. and Hussars. Thanks. So we'll open up both ends but keep the covering. That's the plan. Because if you don't, then it's going to snow in there, get icy in the wintertime, mm -hmm. things like that. So we'll have to provide some lighting in there. Farther up here, um, what we're working now with the um, sales and felons is to try to get an easement for a roadway through here and also cryo camp because we want to make sure that whoever needs to get vehicles down here for parking for tenants and stuff can still do that so we're working to get legal like a driveway easement to be about 16 feet long, wide so it's not going to be like everybody's driving in and out of there it's more like for tenants mm -hmm. private parking deliveries that kind of thing so we're working with them on that also um, and we've got some Part, this, this area here would also have parkway strip with trees in it, just like this part shown here. Um, and then you know about these parking lots that we've been trying to acquire that property. We're still in negotiations with that also. There's a lot of balls up in the air with this project. Um, farther north here, this, is, this part is shown on Mike's drawing here. So this is the North Pedestrian Bridge. Um, so the plan is to take this area where you've got, there's parking like right up above here now, mm -hmm. and tear that down, and then do this as a uh, handicapped accessible power launch. And we were gonna, this isn't shown right, but this is just gonna be like a fishing deck, kind of like we have in the parks on the rivers and stuff already. Right. It won't be this big. Um, then north of that, there'll be some open area in here and the walkway right next to the river, and then it goes underneath the uh, Highway 33 Bridge, where it comes out to a uh, place of origin park. So we have some retaining walls to put up there and go under the bridge, and then it'll join up with the river walk to the north. Where it goes so under the bridge, is that could be cantilevered or filled? Filled. Okay. They're trying to do, it's like a 12-foot walkway with riprap or like river rock like we used on the east side so that we don't have a railing under there. We'll put some lighting underneath the bridge for safety. The DNR is good on that? We've, we have meetings with DNR, DOT bike facilities, and the bridge people from the DOT with SEH. Who else was that? Oh my gosh. Everybody. Everybody oh, under the good. sun. And we ran this by them. This was last year already to make sure that they were all good with what we were planning on doing. Um, so... So far, <laughs> they're okay with well, that's it. That's great to see you moving here. One of Gary Anderson's last ideas or projects was doing that with having a cantilever going underneath that. Okay. Because that was the only thing the DNR would accept at that time. Yeah, what this is going to do is probably um, <coughs> raise the floodplain elevation up on this mm -hmm. part. That's okay because we own this property. Okay. There's no yeah, insurable structures around. up there. So we just have to get an easement from ourselves to okay. allow that to happen. So as far as we know, that shouldn't be a problem. Very good. Well, question, Cindy. Yeah. Um, so this is going to be 12 feet wide. Now I'm going to look like uh, Collins Deck Bar, where that comes down. There's a driveway down there, and people do park down there. That's yes. going to get awful tight. Are these people going to be driving on the cement? You know, there's there's people parked, and they're in and out of there all yes. the time. This is Collins Deck Bar right yep. here, and that's that alley. We we're right. talking about trying to concrete that so it looks a little better. Yeah. It will stay the same width. It's 10 feet wide. And they, this is shown as green grass, but that's actually like a paved area. Okay, that is gravel. paved. So they can cut into yes, their parking spots gonna still down get, there. They're going to have everybody who's got vehicle access now for parking will still, still get okay. it. And same with like behind Hoosars yep. and Wells Fargo. Yep. All those employees park back there. Yep. And they're going to be able to slide. There's going to be enough room to slide in there between the... That gets real tight in Yes. There. Right now, Mike yes. Hoosars asked for five parking spots. We have to go talk to him again about this. But... 
Um, we have a plan to put a multiple curb there so he can pull in. If you look at the way the way these people park, they pull in and then back yes. into those spaces. Yes, they do. They all We're going to allow a multiple curb here so okay. they can pull up on the curb and then back in. That way when they're pulling out, they're seeing people up and okay. down the path because ahead of them. The majority them. of those also park yeah. on what would be the walkway also. So but they're not going to be allowed to do that well, anymore. Wait, be signed here or what? No. <laughs> see, what we're going to... This, this yes. double line here, we are not going to have that. So that's one <laughs> okay. of our... I know we have to have physical barriers to keep people off of there. Signage just doesn't work. I got so it. The plan is to have a curb here so it looks like a street. Oh, okay. I, that, and then this part would be a mountable curb. Okay. So he could pull up and back in. That makes but sense. That 16 foot right of way is going to not look like a regular street no. either. So people, and we'll probably have to sign it like private driveway or private access or something like that. So that you know everybody and their yep. brother going down there you have to break people of that habit because yeah, they're used to it now okay but we're not going to that's not safe to have people no, that's on I'm the saying if, right, exactly cars are driving right next to you and, uh, yes and they're trying to back around yes. and there's hopefully a lot more people down there in the future right. so okay. that would not work okay right. we're going to allow not only pedestrians but bicyclists and yes. scooters and stuff on there yep but no motorized vehicles Tw right 12 foot wide is a shared use path so it's, it's okay. wide enough for that. The beauty of that is if you're coming across, well, this doesn't look like that anymore. If you're coming across this bridge <coughs> on a bike, you can go up the path and underneath here without having to cross Highway 33. So it'll be a lot safer for people trying to ride their bikes on the river walk rather than having to get up here, cross, and then go down mm -hmm. here and up north. Which raises another question, since we've got the river walk here and we do allow dogs on the river walk now, <laughs> are they going to be allowed on the other side? <laughs> Yeah. Or the river okay. Or the river yeah. 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 That's right. Just. Can come up best okay. pocket, old settlers. Oh sure. No, no problem. Yeah. How do we do, Cindy? Some clarification. You did great, Vanna. <laughs> <laughs> right, is that video going to be available on the website or something for the public to see? Um. Yeah. That is pretty. We can put that out there. It's a really big file. I would like to show you the. Yeah. Is there a way of we doing that? Do a meeting with the uh, funders. Get that tried to you and use it kind of get my um, so, um, yeah, once we get done doing that kind of stuff, we should get that out there. They did an excellent job. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Paul. Yeah, Paul, thank you. Yes. <laughs> okay, yeah. any, any more questions on this for Cindy and or Craig? If not, we'll move on. New business. Uh, item A. You have it on your pink sheet. I call it salmon, but it's pink. <laughs> Uh, resignation from Commission, uh, Jen, Jennifer Kane. Uh, this speaks for itself. This does leave us, though, in one little bit of a lurch. Jen was our liaison representative to the Lock Around Commission. So uh, uh, I think I'll, it's a chairman's appointment, so I'm going to appoint myself to fill that temporarily until we get a full uh, commission membership back on. You know, we have uh, vacancy to be filled and everything else. And then we'll go from there. Okay. September 18th is our next meeting. September 18th? What was that liaison for? Lock uh, around. Oh. The policy committee. So yeah, they have yeah. a, there's always yeah. a rep from the park commission. Yeah. It was John Wagner, and then it was going to be Jen, but then she hasn't been able to do it. So. I, I did it uh, first, and then uh, Bill Bass replaced me. And then, uh, as you say, then it was John Wagner for years and years, then Jen, but then that was it. But I, I was the first rep. Uh, or lays them. So anyway, just get that going. Okay. Um, then moving on uh, to donations, and we have a number of these on the uh, yellow. I'll start. Thank you. <laughs> it's my pleasure to announce a donation made by River Shores Air Traffic to the 2019 Dirty Ninja Budweiser Pit, which is almost $1,250. Also, my pleasure to announce a donation made by Regal Wear Worldwide. Okay. 
Okay. I can't hear you, so. Care to elaborate? What's been sand and stone? What's been sand and stone? Oh, yeah. Do you care to elaborate on that? Oh, they donated, that was uh, one of the ingredients for the uh, big mud pit, so. Okay. We would tell you what else was in your room. Yeah. It's, okay. it's classified. It's classified. Yeah. Did they donate? They yes. actually donated 15 tons <laughs> of sand. Or about $200 worth. Oh, no, it was nice. Nothing we had scheduled planned. They said, take it, come back for more if you need it. And we did. And they were, they're just the Johnson's family. They're always very good. Okay. Very good. friendly. Great. Yes. And who's got number five? The disc golf one? Disc golf. There's the Riverside. I do have disc golf. Okay. You're up. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, we have a nice donation here for the Westman Disc Golf Club for $300. Again, that money goes right towards the uh, continued, continued development of the disc golf course at Riverside. So. Okay. Any questions on these donations? If not, I'll entertain a motion to accept and acknowledge said donations. So moved. Second. Thank you. We move and second to accept these donations. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed by the same sign. Motion's carried. Moving on <clears throat> to see special event, Life of Hope concert. Um, August 14th. It's going to be held. It's by the Life of Hope organization. They do a butterfly run in September, and now they're going to be doing a, a concert. Uh, I think it's kind of a uh, oh, come on in and, and perform the, uh, I wouldn't call it a battle of the bands because that's not what it's going to be, but uh, it's on that order that there's going to be a variety of people that are going to be performing, um, and this is for the suicide prevention uh, on a Wednesday night in August. Thank you. <clears throat> Any questions or comments on this? If not, I entertain a motion to approve this. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor of said motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Uh, Trot for Troops. Uh, Trot for Troops is a recent event that's been uh, happening in Riverside Park for many years. Uh, and it starts, it starts off in the North Riverside parking lot. Uh, and it travels all the way on our trails and uh, on a few city streets and then makes its way back um, for the troops fundraising run Saturday, September uh, 7th this year. Thank you. Questions or comments on this? Entertain a motion to approve this request. So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Uh, all in favor of said motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed uh, by the same sign. Motion is carried. Uh, Alzheimer's Walk. Uh, again, a returning event many, many years. Uh, they come in, they load in on a Friday night here in Regnier Park. Uh, and uh, the event takes place on a Saturday morning. Uh, this year is the 21st of September. Thank you. Any second down here? Second. Thank you. Discussion? If not all in favor of said motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed by the same sign. Motion is carried. Thank you. <coughs> I'm sorry. Moving on to, um, okay, yeah. Director of Parks, Recreation, and Forestry position. Jay, can you enlighten us on what's been going on and what the status is at this point? And yeah. Is, and is it, how long has it been posted now? Yes. <laughs> I had a chance to meet with Jim and Mike um, 10 days or so ago. We met with Craig and talked about what's going to happen in the interim regarding Mike handling the operations and office staff kind of doing their own thing um, in Craig's absence. I'm going to serve as the interim uh, parks director and will fulfill that role as faithfully as I can for you all. I look forward to the tour that Craig just sent me a note on and those kind of fun things coming up. And in the meantime, we're going to explore all um, avenues that might have been discussed historically within West Bend, any items that you guys have as far as suggestions or concerns. I, Jim has already expressed his interest in uh, filling the position as is as soon as possible. Craig has shared the same with me. And so I, I certainly understand that request. And, um, just before we do that, we're, we're going to take a pause and look at all our alternatives that we have and explore those as an opportunity that we have. So I'll be meeting with staff one-on-one. -on -one. I'll be meeting with um, you folks as commissioners, and we'll have a chance to have lots of good conversations about 
the interim time period that we have. Okay. Anybody else have any questions or concerns? How long do you think that process will take? That's a good question. I don't have a set timeline on that. <coughs> so what would be a good guess for a timeline? I don't have a good guess on the timeline. I mean, it's, it seems simple enough that you have an idea of what's going to happen. So is it one week, a month? Is it six months, a year? Is it what's, you know, give us, give our staff knows nothing, our commission knows nothing. Um, so it'd be nice to share some information with them. Yeah. I think it's fair to say it's greater than a week and less than a year as far as the, I don't have any preconceived notions. So if I had to guess three months, maybe be a realistic time. And three months meaning for the process or three months to decide what to do? I'm not sure if I understand the question. Well, if you posted the job today, it would be about a two and a half to three month process to interview, get applications, interview, hire somebody, have them give notice, come in, et cetera. So that's if you posted it today. If you're saying you're going to post it in three months, then it's a six month process. So what's, what? Ultimate date is when do you post a job? Right, and I guess that's what I'm saying. I don't know that date. I would anticipate it being greater than a week, less than a year, but if pushed, three months is what I'm thinking at this time. Jay, are you leaning towards not feeling it then? I wouldn't say that. I'm not leaning towards anything. I'm leaning towards learning about options and alternatives and that's the process. talking to all you guys, yeah. So, Mike? Will handle his crew day to day, every day, right? He doesn't. Uh, you're not. You just run with the whole thing, which you've done. I mean, I mean you know how to do that part. Uh, and then Carolyn's going to kind of run the office, right? And, you know, the day to right. Is that correct? Day to day, I'm taking it, right? Day by day. Day by day, right? Yep. I'm guessing so. Carolyn and Karen certainly yep. have the upfront stuff. Yep. Cindy, Jackie do what they do. Nick does his recreation right. piece. I'll be available for yes, right. anything high level major stuff. Major comes up, they have the number, they need uh, you know, Mike, something major happens, he's gotta get a hold of somebody. Craig's not there, he'll be calling you, I think. Is that yep. correct? Okay. I would need your phone number then. Yep. Yeah, because no, I think that's most I don't think that's important. I mean, most people have my cell phone number, so okay. if you don't have it, I don't have it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have it either. You're welcome to have it. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay, give it to me. Yeah, that's true. I said I ship it out every week what, to all, it, all I'll employees. Get it from Jay. I'll get it from Jay and I'll email it out to everybody tomorrow. Perfect. Have it. All right, I, I, um, go Jim, ahead. If you may, if I may. Um, Jim, how do you want to be communicated to during this process? And Mike, do you want to be included? You know. Yeah. You know, over the next yeah. I'm one sure week to one year. We're going to meet know. with Jay. Any we have a meeting scheduled for August 6th. Yep. we got one coming up here. Well, I'm just, yeah. you know, as the commissioners go, I mean, you want yeah. to be kept in the loop on yeah. not day-to-day -day operations, but most, larger most items, definitely. I'm, that are going I'm, on. I'm a little disturbed that we seem to be, I'm sorry, but dragging your feet. Because this is something that is pretty much there. And as I shared with you the other day on the phone, Monday I got a phone call from a young man saying, has West Bend posted their position yet? Because I want to get it. Now, oh. let's face it, the grapevine in the state, and in fact, in the nation, is things. something hits, they know he's gone to Oconomowoc. Kind of they know who all of the people are, you know, in WRPA type of thing. And I said, well, what, what are you talking about? And he says, yeah, I know Krebby, Craig Kevin has gone to Oconomowoc. He said, and I'd be interested. Uh, uh, he said, so I'd like to know when it would be appropriate for me to uh, apply for the position. When do you think it's going to be posted? He said, because I'm, on, I'm really serious now about moving onward and upward. Uh, and I asked him to try to get a little more information. So, well, you know, what's your name? Where are you? He said, whoa, whoa. He says, I can't say anything right now. He said, because I don't want to jeopardize my existence now. My point is that if we have people already are looking, obviously I think there something has to, these people are already vetted, so to speak, or they're looking to be vetted. And I think we are missing the boat if we don't take a little bit more uh, rapid action on this because we can go they're going to start saying if you don't get it out there within a couple of months you can say oh west bend doesn't have a position anymore forget it i don't think we want to jeopardize the reputation and the eminence that this department has garnered over the last 15 years and i think it's a uh, mistake on your part to drag your feet and i think you should put this on post haste and move forward on it very very quickly you've got it in front of you you can call any people in the WRPA, you can call the NRPA to see what the appropriate thing is for that. 
I know that you probably are getting a little bit of pressure from on top, but I, I think that you're missing the boat and you've got a good opportunity to destroy a tremendous uh, department and a tremendous quality of life because the mayor may think and you may think that quality of life is number three. Well, it ranks one, one, one. Sorry. People will not come here if they don't have a quality of life, if they don't have the parks and the recreation thing, if they don't have education. That ranks right up there with safety. That ranks right up there with roads. Now, you may disagree with that, and obviously you do. You don't put much importance on this. I don't think. But let's move ahead and see if we can get going. And you can rest assured we're going to work closely with you to try and get this thing expedited. And I think we should include the mayor on this also. I'm disappointed he wasn't here tonight. So anyway, that's all I've got to say about it. Anybody else have anything else they want Jim, to say? Jim, 15 years ago, do you recall, did they post it right away? We posted it. I can go all the way back to 1999 when Gary Anderson retired. He we even had, remembers how many applications there were. <laughs> you're absolutely right, I do. About that. The point is, is Steve Schauer had already been interviewed as the replacement. Well, in fact, we had had, Steve Shar was not, I'll be honest, it was not our first selection. Ron Grau was from, who was over in Waukesha, and in fact, he had tentatively accepted it. He was ready to step in the, day, the weekend after uh, Gary Anderson left, and for uh, personal reasons, Ron opted not to take it, and then we had Steve. So in other words, we had this thing all ready to go. Uh, Dennis had Terry Sercala move ahead on it and everything. Back in, when Craig came in 04, uh, <clears throat> Steve had let us know when he was retiring. We had that posted within two weeks. And we had uh, Craig on board. I think Steve was left about a week or two before you got here. He was a little bit more than that. but Yeah, but I mean, it was within a month we had it. But we had, but we had a confirmation from Craig that he was going to take the job. The job has not remained open at all. And if we leave a gap on there, I think people are going to sense in the industry and everything else that what's wrong with West Bend? Do I really want to go there now if they're going to be dragging their feet like this? And I think you're jeopardizing a tremendous effort that's been done here and reputation that we have. And I would hope it not. You would heed what I'm saying and give it a lot more thought to move forward expeditiously. Because I'd hate to think that we let this go and then this department falls apart. And then you might as well forget Mayor speaks about quality of life. If you guys don't want to move ahead, then we know what you think about it, and you've got different uh, values and everything else. And I'm sure the city will be more than happy to embrace that with you. Right. Anybody else? We haven't had a conversation at at council about the position as a whole it, again it would be premature to do that without having the time to explore the alternatives so they always talk about transparency which i always get a chuckle out of because it's only transparent when it's somebody else's deal what you want to see and not your own so i guess i would ask that you become very transparent with our staff and our commission because you've just said we have alternatives to explore. Well, what does that mean? I mean, what are those three options or five options? What are the alternatives? I mean, if you know there's alternatives, what are they? And then if you're going to talk, to, if you're going to include staff in the process and commission, that would make a lot of sense. So if you're truly going to ask them what's important to them or what's important to this job, that's great. And I w hope you do. But if it's just lip service, then that tells us a lot too. It's unfortunate that it's come to this because in any other city that I've I know through the state association they definitely value quality of life and they actually want to interview and hire people as soon as they possibly can. So it's disappointing that West Bend being the size we are, the tremendous department this is, the value that the city residents ask for, demand, quality, parks, recreation programs, um, and want to keep things moving. Yes, we have an awesome staff and they're going to keep things moving on the short term. but. There's a thousand other things lined up that people want to see happen, and that's not going to happen. So uh, it's it's very simple to move forward, or at least at least come up with some options if you're going to do that and keep it moving versus waiting six months and then deciding to do something. So be transparent. Make sure you're communicating with the staff constantly, the park commission, and let them know what you're what you're thinking because 
you know, when somebody doesn't tell you information, I'll make up whatever story I want and I'll start spreading that word. So make sure you are very clear, honest, open with everybody. I appreciate that. All right. Anybody else have any comments? Okay. Concerns. Okay. Moving on to reports. The chair will defer till the end of the agenda. Secretary, Mike. Um, I just want to say, uh, Greg, you're going to really be missed is the first thing, okay? And you know that. Um, we're very fortunate to have you all these years because you're really out there in the community. And in these years that you served, I mean, the, the friends you've made, the relationships with it's, you know, about relationships with businesses, it's not going to be easy to replace. Even if you bring a guy in tomorrow, it takes how many years before you knew the Kevin Steiners and knew the people to talk to because part of your job is you're the face of this, you know, position, and that's, that's going to really be hard to replace. So, again, thanks for the years. I mean, we're very, very fortunate, really. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Conservation. Oh, Megan's not here, but do we have a report from them? Uh, the only report is that Megan will be leaving employment with us in two weeks. And there's a committee actually put together and we just screened applicants. So they'll be doing some interviews starting next week and uh, hopefully get somebody hired fairly soon. Okay, very good. Tourism and event, Jackie. Um, events have been crazy uh, we, because we've been battling weather since the end of May. <coughs> crazy with weather. Fortunately, all of the events have gone forward. Uh, the only one that really took a hit this year was Relay for Life. Um, they were all set up, they were ready to go, and then the monsoon hit at about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, so they really took a hit. Um, but uh, they, at this point, they are talking about returning next year. We'll see. They may have uh, taken such a hit that they can't return. But we're working with them and we're doing what we can to work with them all the way through. Fourth of July was, uh, uh, we had rain, uh, but again the police and fire worked with me well and, and stalling things and the fireworks and we got a beautiful fireworks show off. If you happen to see it, it was, they actually gave us about three or four thousand dollars extra worth of fireworks because we've had two years of rain in a row and they said we just really appreciate the fact that you didn't cancel and that you didn't uh, postpone which is hugely expensive for them um, so we had an extra about seven minutes of show and four or five grand easy so any questions we have uh, if not uh, excuse me i'm sorry moving on to our recreation nick i'll provide a brief update on uh, Recreation program is as far as the summer, obviously it's ongoing, but let's recap, we opened the beach on June 7th, June was kind of a slow start of the blue month, but obviously the beach is moving now with the warm weather, a lot of new patrons come through the door, and then we'll keep the beach open until August 18th, and the splash pad will be open 12 to 5 p.m., and on those two days that we be at heat advisory, we did offer the splash pad to the patrons. Extended the hours from uh, 12 to 5 to 11 to 7 for the splash pad as well for those days. To accommodate the heat. Summer activities started on Monday, June 10th. These are activities programs that we have also at the park, Riverside, Regner, Tennis, West Bend High School, West Bend High School Pool, Swim Lessons, all those different activities. And we will conclude our second session of summer activities on Thursday, August 1st. We'll have some wrap up right here. Park. We also have a summer dance recital that evening as well. And then that will be followed, followed by the children's theater play performance, another one of our summer programs to get the practice in. All summer long, get ready for the third performance, which will be Friday, again right here at Record Park. It's a headlining stage, August 2nd. And then movie in the park is a partnership with Community TV on Friday, July 19th. It was a little warm, so the turnout was a little warm. <laughs> <laughs> a little more. That's the understatement. People that were here had some good acti kids' activities provided by First Bank Financial Center, who's the second <laughs> sponsor once again the third year for that event. We have many other sponsors as well to help make that event free for all patrons that want to come enjoy the movie. Regner Beach staff will host the Super Slide Days. We'll set the inflatable slide on page 
here on the south and north end, slide down into the pond. Um, like screw sets that up. And our first one will be Wednesday, July 31st. The next one will be Wednesday, August 14th. Super slide. Fall program registration online for residents will begin Tuesday, August 6th. And then online for non residents will begin Tuesday, August 13th. Walk ins for residents will be Friday, August 9th in the office. A lot of registrations are online, of course, as you all know. And walk in for non residents is August 13th at 8 o'clock. Obviously, office hours. Mud Run was July 13th. Park. Our final numbers was 1,937. Good turnout once again for that event. Thank you again for all that helped out and supported for that event. Any questions for Nick? Okay, excuse me. Uh, moving on, Superintendent of Parks and Forestry, Michael. Thanks, Jim. Uh, last month we mentioned Jim Didier, one of our staff members, had retired. Uh, we did start the interview process for filling that position. Uh, Jim was a horticulturist. That was his official title. All of our staff members cross-trained on everything we do, but his title was horticulturist. Uh, the new position will be horticulturist and arborist. Um, a little more focus on some forestry work, things like that. Uh, continue planting in the parks. Post EAB in the parks. Um, we are planting many, many small, young trees every year. We are not doing any structural pruning on those trees, and that is going to cause issues 10, 15, 20 years down the road. So this position will do some of that work, some of the catch-up work, things like that. Um, we are also happy and sad to announce that Rick Threshold, our lead arborist, will be retiring as of August 2nd. Uh, Rick has been with us 18 years. Um, Rick is was definitely an instrumental player in the Emerald Ash Borer program, but even before that, the Gypsy Moth program to, Rick was the face of our forestry program. Carolyn and Karen take the phone call, they generate a service request, it gets to me, I give it to Rick, and Rick is the one out on the street talking with our residents on a daily basis, daily. Rick talks to our customers more than I would on a regular basis. Um, to accommodate their needs, whatever might be wrong with their tree, et cetera, et cetera. So um, Rick's actually been <coughs> off for a couple weeks already. Good for Rick. <laughs> Not for us. Um, but he will be officially retired August 2nd. Um, Dan Farber, one of our arborists, will be stepping into Rick's role as lead arborist. Dan has been with us 10 years, something like that. Dan's a certified arborist, pesticide applicator, et cetera, et cetera. Um, again, Dan's been with us. Through EAB, um, he can help us finish EAB in a couple more years at that. Um, so right now we have an open arborist position. And we don't know if we will be filling that. Um, we are waiting for confirmation from city administration on that. So uh, last item, again, I'm going to stick with uh, staffing updates. Uh, this week, Kurt Hefmeister, one of our staff members, um, found out he is now a certified arborist in the state of Wisconsin. Kurt passed his certification, took his test on the 16th of July, so um, Kurt's one of those guys, when we hired him, we thought and hoped that he was definitely gonna be a future in our department, and he wants to learn, and he wants to work hard, and he's working through his certifications very, very quickly, very impressed. So a huge shout out to Kurt, that's, that's a big accomplishment. Mm -hmm. um, for us, it's great, we wanna continue with Kurt, we want to continue training with other staff members and keep developing them. I just hope they all stay in West Bend now. And so that's, I mean, we would never stop training. We would never stop supporting their professional growth, but it works so hard to see them develop. I just hope we can keep those people here. So that's what I have. Thanks, Jim. Mike, a question for you. Yes, Do sir. we have a defined mountain bike trail? In this park? No. <laughs> Just tonight. It's fairly there tonight. is one tonight, though. I think it's cool because then the average I do. I know the, I know the club. Or yeah. I know the club that's yeah. it. Right. No, I think it's absolutely yeah. very cool. They all have yeah. helmets and they look great. So. And when they came through here, the lead, the lead bike said, shh, as they entered the area. Yeah, that's John the answer. Yep. Yeah. So. Okay, good. Okay. Any questions for Mike? Anything else? If not, Cindy, you get to wrap that part of it up because we still have two more things to go. Two okay. more things to go. A um, couple quick things. We've got the two shelters in Ralph's Park. The roofing went on this week. Mike's crew did all the restoration around them. 
so those two shelters are up and running and done. We got the asphalt pad and drive up to the barn at La Coran done. Um, and then there's another little path that was carved out to get to the basement with, you know, the gator or whatever they use out there. Um, so that's finished. Mike's crew did the restoration. <laughs> And it's prepped. That's good. No, it's a that's specialty. Specialty. And prepped it too. Yeah, so, yeah. He prepped the good, the after, the gravel mm -hmm. base stuff for it. So those are done. Um, my or Craig's turned over a half a dozen or a dozen small projects that he kind of started out with and. Fifty-two. Yeah. So we're kind of in process with a whole bunch of different things. So besides, I found out we got the grant agreement from Fun for Lake Michigan. We got awarded a hundred thousand dollar grant to go towards design and engineering for the west side river walk fantastic there you go. any questions for cindy sure. if not okay we'll move on uh, to our quarterly trust report it's a blue one in your packets it's white in mine but uh the yeah so june 30th these are the totals just two highlights uh so you see the parc fund uh, we're working with the Kiwanis, early, early riser Kiwanis group on a new shelter here at Regner Park. And so somewhere down the pike, uh, we're probably going to ask for $10,000 to be transferred out of that fund towards their project. They also have some money left over from when they did the fish pond. And the Regner Rejuvenation Group just voted to provide $20,000. So they already have a $50,000 head start, and they're looking at funding the rest of it. So you'll see that coming down the pike in a few months. And Cindy's been involved in that process now as well. And the dog park, uh, we took a number of things out with all the improvements. I think the only thing not out of there yet is the roof, probably. So that's about a $6,000 number. So their fee will be around, or the total will be around $24,000 when that's done. And park fees continue to come in a little bit, so we're up to $192,000 there. That's from impact fees for dwelling units. And happy to answer any questions. And if you do have questions, ask Mike Weston because he's now an expert in this whole page we talked today. Okay. Any questions regarding the quarterly uh, trust report? Nope. If not, moving on. Director, Craig. I have to talk? <laughs> well, no, yeah, but you time. don't get I've, last I've shot. I've never passed. Uh, you, you don't get last shot. Just I do have one correction and then a couple quick comments. So we had our Riverwalk grand opening part two the other night, which was great. Everybody came down. We cut the ribbon. We did so showed off the logos. It was really nice. Um, but when the mayor was talking about the funding, I think he said something to the effect it was a third funded by grants, a third funded by the city, and a third by private donations. Not accurate. 4% uh, of the entire $2 million bill was from the city, so $80,000. And that was from an account from 2012 when we were doing some pre-work on it. So $80,000 from the city, uh, close to $600,000, so about a third of it with the uh, private donations and grants actually were close to two-thirds. Uh, both DNR twice plus DOT we leveraged with it. So big thanks to the state of Wisconsin for the, both the DNR and the DOT. All the private donations uh, were the key factors to make it happen. So that's the Riverwalk thing. Uh, I just want to thank people, obviously. Uh, it's my last Park and Rec Commission meeting here in West Bend. And since they call it the Park Board in Economwalk, it's my last Park Rec <laughs> Commission meeting ever, I hope. Um, no, so hopefully you guys, well, actually I'll pass these out. I think I emailed our, our staff has this and our commission has it, but I want to pass it out to the commission for sure. I have it. Feel free to share. It's a quick one page summary on what I. <laughs> it's a quick one page summary on definitely, you know, what's important about West Bend and why West Bend Park Rec Forester is so important to the community and how people should be very pleased with what they have because if you go to a state park rec conference or even a national and you look at sizes of cities of West Bend or you look at even larger ones, they usually don't compare. You look at Regner Park, easily the best city park in the state. Um, three different trails. I don't think any other city has three trails like that. The Riverwalk, Ice Age, and Rails of Trails, the Eisenbahn here. Uh, the amount of recreation programs we put on outdoors and indoors, the amount of special events that have ramped up because of Regner Park and other parks, that's why Jackie's going nuts throughout the summer, and it's awesome, because there's so many groups that use this facility, use the parks for trails, uh, for fun runs, and all those different things. So it's certainly a huge piece. Lock the Rank Conservancy is probably one of my favorites. 
Uh, the friends grew up there. Friends group is outstanding, and Paul, uh, the president, is here, mm -hmm. and the first lady of friends of Park or friends of Lock Loran, Sue. Um, but so we've done, and truly, if you look through the last 15 years, with the help of many, many people, staff, organizations, we've done a ton of things. And I'm not going to go through all of them, but I do thank Gary Anderson. He was the first Park Rec director, 30 years, and he's the one that really had the vision. He didn't have the vision for Regna Park, it was already here, Ziegler Park was already here, Barton Park was already here, but the Riverwalk, the original Riverwalk, connecting parks, a lot of neighborhood parks, getting to know the Kiwanis and getting to know the, the Rotary Clubs. Uh, they were hugely important to that, and Gary was <coughs> a visionary and a, and a great person. Steve Schauer came in, he was here about six years. He helped develop Quas Creek Park and got some other lands going with Rolfs Park and Parkside O, and then turned it over to me, and I, just for me, I've been very fortunate to be here. That's, that's an, <laughs> is, that, is that it? <laughs> that's, no, it's, it's really, it's, it's amazing. Don't say anymore. No, it's, no, I do, because our oh, staff okay. is what counts. It's, okay. So it's just really the people. Now, the, the facilities are one thing, but it comes down to human connections. And uh, I had a long list here of all the different people we've connected with. So please read that and thank those people. I didn't list even any of the, the donors besides Westman Mutual, but there's Hundreds of people have donated money. You heard a few more tonight with the mud run and many other things. But uh, it really comes down to trying to do what's best for the residents and listen to them. And truly, quick story: when I started, we were hot on hot and trot on Parkside O and trying to develop. We threw about four different things at it, from ball diamonds to pools to passive, and nothing really stuck. We were also chasing our tail with trying to catch up with all the development because it was the hot time of building houses, so Prairie Meadow, Forest View, all that. The, the economy kind of tank in 08 was probably a good thing, um, <coughs> in a sense, because it brought us back to the center of the city. So Regner Park, Riverside Park, all the downtown things. Uh, Old Settlers, Vest Pocket, the Riverwalk now. So it's interesting, but you know, when the first five years, we were kind of chasing our tail, doing all this stuff, and then it kind of brought us back. And then that's where people stepped up, the rejuvenation group. I still remember the pictures of shingles hanging <laughs> off the roofs, the sinks that were atrocious, no hot water, the asphalt that went like this. This place was falling apart. The park was terrible. And we were part of that, and we were trying to make it better. So to have four service clubs come together and make that happen, pretty amazing. Um, Lock and Ran, the Friends Group raising over a million dollars to make things happen out there. It was crazy good. But then you think about all the small stuff, the dog park, the fundraising disc golf, archery range, skate park, and there's always been so many people. So uh, big thank to the community, big thanks, and then also to our staff and park commission, because you guys support what I did, what our staff does, and staff is outstanding, as you know. I mean, every meeting we have, I thank them for what they do, and um, thank you definitely for 15 great years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Deep breath. Everything else, because I said I defer, it, and it's very short. You already took about four pages of what I was going to say, but that's all. You can say whatever you like. I know. No, I just want to recollect a little bit. My wife and I moved to West Bend in 1971, and I got to know the park people only because I was playing softball, and that was where Gary Anderson had it going. And the park and recreation, the PRF was really uh, on pretty solid ground at that point in time. In 82, I was fortunate enough to be appointed to the commission. Uh, and at that time, it was really growing even stronger and everything, especially with the growth of our baseball program and everything, adult baseball program. The only reason I got involved in the commission is because I, I was on the grievance committee for the softball league and we had a lot of contentious <laughs> things. That's and, always fun. And somehow I got elected chairman of that, and the next thing I know, they had me on, on the commission. Anyway, in 84, uh, when uh, Terry Suppenot left, I was called uh, and take over as chair, and it's, it's been a learning experience since then. I like to say is that Gary Anderson had a tremendous foresight and everything, and really had worked hard to establish it. Steve Shower came in, there were a lot of loose ends had to be uh, tied up, and he did. He really got things firmed up uh, from that. There was no more loose ends to speak of. And then Craig came, and he just ran with it. I've been fortunate to work with these three gentlemen, and what is really most is. Uh, I learned what a field trip was because from Gary Anderson running me down to Chicago and Indiana looking at parks, uh, Steve giving, Steve Schauer giving me uh, lectures on finance and everything. He was just finishing his master's on uh, 
municipal <coughs> finance or something. Got a big education there. And then all the field trips are ran with Craig, everything. And what impressed me, though, is every place we went, how people were impressed with the West Bend contingent because he said, you know, you're interested. You want to know what's going on. You're not trying to impress us what you've got. You want to know what we got and how we can help you. And I think that's the one thing that has always characterized this uh, uh, park, uh, Parks Department and everything else uh, from it. And most notably, it's gotten a national their acknowledgement and national eminence because we've had two NRPA gold medal finalists. What other community can say that of this size? I don't know. Again, a lot of that goes to Craig and everybody he's imbued to do that. So with that, I want to thank you for allowing me to go along on this journey with you. Thank you very much. Well. With no further business to come before the commission, I hereby adjourn this meeting.